Slope Size has been designed by Crystal Ski Holidays in association with David Lloyd Clubs to ensure you can get more winter out of your holiday, maximising time spent on the slopes. Today we're going to take you through a five minute dynamic warm up. This is just designed to prep you up ready for the slopes and hopefully make sure you stay injury free through the exercise routine. Movement number one is super simple, we're just going to do a jog on the spot. So for this, we just want nice light feet, lovely tall spine, and we'll try not to forget to engage those abdominals. When you're ready to take things up a notch, we're going to get a little bit more dynamic with this. We're going to start turning that into a heel flick jog on the spot. Goal here is to try and keep these knees stacked right underneath the hips. We don't want to see knees out in front. We should be able to get a light stretch out of the front of those quads. Okay, for number two, we're going to go into our cross-country ski swing. This is the first balance orientated movement and we're going for a very gentle leg swing to start with. Gradually we can progress the height of this swing. We're looking to get a nice hamstring stretch, so back of the leg when we take the leg in front. And as that leg goes back, we should open up the front of that hip as well. Of course, we're then going to start going across the body. And this opens up inside of the hip and the outside of the hip. Um, remember you guys have got to do the other leg as well, even yourself up. Number three, we're going to go to our ski learner sidestep. So remember when we first started walking sideways in those skis, we're going to mirror that movement. We're going to give you two shuffles to the, to the side. We're going to hit our squat. We're going to shuffle back to the side, hit our squat, and then we're going to start speeding that up. Again, on your squat position, head up, chest up, as we go. Perfect. Number four, we're going to hit our ski lift squat. So when you're standing in that ski lift, Waiting, this gives you something to do. We're going to open up the chest, hands behind the head. Big squat, so deep as you can go with that back nice and tall. And then we come out of that quite dynamically. So really lifting those heels and getting a nice calf raise at the bottom of that movement. So this is lovely for really opening up ankle, knees and hips and also that thoracic spine, that mid upper back as well. Number five, we go to ski boot lunges. Anyone's got those tight salopettes on this will be quite a nice one to start opening up and getting those legs moving. When you're ready for the ski lunge to move up a notch, we can go for our overhead reach. This is again gonna open up the front of the body and again, get some nice movement through that mid upper back as well. Okay, salopet stretch. So we're gonna feel this one through the back of the body. For this movement, we're gonna start reaching down towards the floor, trying not to bend those knees too much. When you get the hands to the floor, we're gonna walk out, walk back in, Stand up, repeat the movement. Every time you go into this, if you can, see if you can keep those legs a little bit straighter and we can open up the hamstrings a little bit more. Here we go for number seven. This is the final one on your warm up drill. We're going to go into our aero tuck position. So think aerodynamic, get your ski poles tucked in, and then all we're going to do is squat our way out of this warm up. Remember on this drill, we really want to try and fire up those glutes. So you've got two options, remember, with the backside. You can have relaxed, mushy apple sauce, or we can have big, fired up, rosy apples. That is the goal for you guys on this last drill on that warm-up. We can take the pace up a little bit, and then that is your warm-up done. All right, guys, this is sloper size step one workout. Today you're going to be working for 30 seconds on each exercise. You're also going to get 30 seconds to recover uh, before we go again. Exercise number one we're going to hit you with is a lower body move. This is your sloper size mogul ski hop. However, for step one workout, we're not going to be jumping or hopping with this. It just works into a side step with a squat. We're going to take this from one side to the other. So the key here, again, is looking for range, looking for depth. If we feel comfortable with the movement, then we can start speeding that up. Remember, we're only here for 30 seconds and we still want to get slightly out of breath, get ourselves to that uncomfortable point at the end of that 30 seconds. Remember on our squat position, head up, chest up. We're looking at that nice tall spine as we move into that lower part of the squat. Great stuff, guys, and rest. So this is where hopefully you've worked hard enough in that first 30 seconds to need this full 30 seconds of recovery. So ask yourself that question. If you haven't, next time you can start working a little bit harder. Remember, we're looking to get you slightly breathless and uncomfortable by the end of that 30 seconds. So in the recovery, make the most of that time. We can relax those legs, shake them loose. Remember to have a drink close by as well if you need to. So breath back, heart rate down, etc. Guys, last few seconds of recovery. We're gonna move into movement number two. 
which is for upper body. This is our sloper size sledge pull. So think about that at race ski, pulling the kids along in the sledge. This one's gonna come in handy. So guys, let's grab those bands. So position wise on here, remember we're using two arms for this one, okay? So we're gonna use both sides of the body. We can stay tall if we want to, we can take the tension out of those legs. So three, two, one, off we go. Hit those rows. Remember our goal here, you can stay tall, but remember we wanna see a big squeeze through those shoulder blades. Excellent movement. So finished position, we're trying to bring those hands right in towards the ribs. And we wanna make sure we're not shrugging those shoulders up every time we hit that row. So shoulders are low, but really nice squeeze on those shoulder blades. Imagine you've got a little one pound coin between your shoulder blades, you're trying to crush that in that finished position. If we wanna go easy on the legs, remember on this one guys, we can stay tall and just work the upper body on this. Allow those legs to recover. Okay, rest. Let's make the most of that 30 seconds. Bands can go down. Breath back, heart rate down, etc. Drink if you need. Okay, final few seconds, shake those legs out if you need. Woo! Here we go, so number three, this is lower body. This is our Apre Ski Stein Squat. So we've got to pretend, if you haven't got one at home, you've got your Stein in front of you. So that big, extra large beer. We're gonna stick that underneath the chin, and here we go, down into our squats. Really low, and back up and squeeze those glutes to the top. So part of this movement is actually a test of mobility for those hips, but also for that thoracic spine. So this part of the upper back, what we don't want to see again is any rounding or bulging in the upper back. So head up, chest up, we'll try and keep that back super, super flat. Other thing to look at, last few seconds, make sure those knees are finishing wider, definitely not narrow. We do not want to see those knees coming in at the bottom of that squat. Last couple of seconds. Rest up, good. Shake those legs loose. Again, grab your drink, heart rate down, and breath back. So let's get ready for the next movement. Number four, this is our upper body slash core movement. So we're stuck in the powder. We're trying to get that snow pole out of that deep, uh, deep powder. So this is a really great pulling movement, and it's gonna challenge our core a lot. So guys, you ready for this? So grab ourselves some dumbbells. Let's get into position. So for our step one workout, we're gonna be down on our knees for this. So we're gonna take this to the floor, and only at one point are we gonna have one hand on the floor. So are we ready? Okay, take those knees just back behind the hips, and off we go. So we have one row. We're gonna change hands, squeeze that shoulder blade. Now when we do this movement, we're looking for a little bit of rotation through that upper body. We should feel those abdominals engaged all the way through. So we can alternate like so. If we want to progress this from the knees, we can just slide those knees a bit further back, still keep these glutes squeezed and abs on. That's going to make that a much tougher, challenging movement. Okay, the last couple of reps. Wonderful stuff. Okay, dumbbells down, rest and recover. So what you should find hopefully with that exercise is that with some practice and with over time, we might be able to build it up. Step two, we'll take that into a longer, more challenging plank position. At the minute, get used to it with the knees on the floor and so on. You'd be surprised how much cardio that is. It's very challenging as well for entire body movement. Okay, so move number five, this is gonna focus on lower body. This time it's our ski lift sideways shuffle. So remember with those skis stepping to the side, very, very similar movement. We're gonna stay quite tall with this. Guys, you need to pick up your bands, get ready. So we're going to stand on top of our resistant band. Wonderful, cross over, get some tension, stand up nice and tall. So a slight bend on the knees and off we go. So we're stepping to the side. Remember on this one we're sliding along, just need to be big steps. What we don't want to see are those toes rotating out. So we want to keep that foot looking nice and straight ahead. Tall spine, head up, chest up, make sure we're not folding over. Now guys, if you haven't got a band at home, this time we're gonna give you another option. So we can just have a nice lie down on the floor, much more civilized, even support the hand on the head. And all we're gonna do is take this top leg into a lift. So this raise is gonna go as high as we can. After a few reps of this, without that knee bending, we should start feeling some great tension build up right on the side of this hip, on the side of this glute. Final few seconds, three, two, one, well done, rest those legs. Bands away. So again, remember, use your rest and recovery time wisely. Drink if you need, relax the body as much as you need to. Um, 
Whilst we're recovering, I'm going to introduce the next movement. So number six, this is your balance challenge. Um, ski lift, cue board and buster. So when we're standing in that queue, we need something to do. We're going to choose a leg and we're going to just balance. Now when you guys do this, we want that big toe driven into the floor, a slight knee bend and sitting back through that hip. You guys ready for action? Choose a leg, three, two, one, let's go. And hold. So what we're looking to try and do is just see how still we can stay. If we start seeing this knee wobbling all over the place, and if we need to hold on to something for balance, that's absolutely fine. Even if the other foot needs to touch down every now and again, that's absolutely fine. Just try and hold that balance as long as you can. Remember, big toe driven in, slight bend on knee, back through the hip. Brilliant. Final few seconds. Nothing else involved. By the time we get to end that 30 seconds, you should feel that calf probably starting to be on fire. If we've loaded that glute, we'll feel some good tension. Ah, change legs. Off we go again. Now, when we move on to steps two and steps three, you'll see some quite, quite challenging progressions to this balance exercise. To begin with, if you feel this one tough, there's nothing wrong with practicing this on a daily basis. You should find you improve quite quickly with these balance drills. Again, if you start noticing this knee rolling in, start waking up this glute, trying to pull that knee back in line, ankle, knee and hip should stay nicely stacked up through this movement. Relax the shoulders, breathe it out, final few seconds. Great job, well done, relax. Pretty tough that, legs. Okay, um, number seven, this is our lower body, our high intensity finisher. Now for step one workout, this speed skater actually adjusts to become a little bit of a, a curtsy lunge. So we're not jumping and there's no kind of power involved in this movement. Um, guys, whilst you're resting, I'm just gonna demo the movement for you, okay? So all we're gonna do for this is simply step behind and sink down towards the floor, back to our start position, and we cross over to the other side. Nice and simple. Happy with that? Okay, remember this is our finisher. There's nothing left after this, so we can work as hard as we want. You guys ready? Let's go. So we're a step and sink. Start off slow with this, make sure you're well balanced. When we step out, the feet are gonna be almost lined up, so we're not stepping too far behind. The front of the body should be nice and lifted, so we do not wanna see you kind of folding forwards on this movement. Now, if you're happy with the move, last 10 seconds on the clock, let's start speeding it up a little bit. Excellent. Really nice stretch right on the outside of those glutes each time from side to side. Rest up. Let's make the most of this 30 seconds recovery again. Wonderful. So guys, that is the end of your step one workout. So if you found that challenging, then great. Let's give this, this um, workout a few more goes. If you feel that it's starting not to become challenging, that's when we can move you on to a step two and then step three workout. Hi right, guys, welcome finally to the Sloper Size Cool Down. So we're gonna take you guys through uh, some relaxing and some mobility orientated uh, stretches to help you recover and to help you stay injury free on the slopes. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this down to the ground for a back stretch. This is really nice for the lats. So guys, we're gonna get on all fours. So we'll just take those wrists under the shoulders, the knees directly under the hips. We'll try and keep the back nice and flat. All we're gonna do with this is take one hand, we're gonna karate chop the floor out in front. We make sure we keep that arm locked out straight so there's no elbow bend. If you want to, you can additionally take the other hand as well and do both sides at the same time. We're gonna gently just lower down, taking that forehead almost to the floor. So the goal here is to get a good stretch through the back and through the shoulders. Additionally, we can move to the right, a little sweep to the right and a little sweep to the left, just to feel that stretch increase on the right and on the left hand side. So we'd like to be breathing, of course, all the way through this. So we look for four or five deep breath cycles in through nose and out through the mouth. Great stuff, fantastic. Okay, back up we go. Number two, we're gonna go into quads. Again, these bad boys are working super hard for you throughout the workout and on the slope. So we've got three options here for you. Kirsty's gonna demonstrate the lying quad stretch. Neil, we're gonna get down and we're gonna do our, or sorry, our single leg balance quad stretch. And if any of those are still not quite as intense enough for you, we've got a kneeling option as well. So with this one, all we're doing is reaching behind for the foot. The goal here is to drop the hip down and then gently we take that heel back towards the bottom. We should feel a really good stretch, hopefully on all of these, whichever your option is, right on the front of that thigh. Again, four to five nice deep breath cycles, breathe, relax and recover. And of course, make sure you do both sides. Great stuff team. Okay, thoracic spine, so this mid upper back, this is an area we should have lots of lovely movement in, we should. 
Um, for this one, again, we're going to get down on the ground. So an on all fours position. Very simply, we're going to take the right hand. We're going to reach that arm underneath and scrape it along the floor almost as far as we can go. We should feel a nice stretch, a nice rotation through that upper back. We're going to come out and follow that hand right the way up towards the ceiling. Your eyes are following your fingertips. And then we repeat. So a nice sweep and controlled flow from start to finish. Hopefully on this, we keep the lower back nice and still. Most of the movement should be from the upper back. If we would like a slightly more intense version, the foot in front, that's gonna give us a slightly deeper stretch through the hip as well as the thoracic spine. Fantastic, okay, up we go. Hip flexes. So right at the top of the thighs, these hip flexes um, are gonna get a really good stretch now. So very simply, we're gonna get into a kneeling position. Hopefully you've got some nice comfortable carpet to do this on at home. Step number one, we want to try and tilt this pelvis back. If we hop this pelvis tilted forward, we're not going to feel the stretch. So think about tucking the bum under, opening up the front of that hip. Second move, if you can, see if you can squeeze that butt cheek, fire it up. We're going to let the hip drive forwards just until we feel that good stretch right on the front of the hip. If we need more on this stretch, that left arm or the same arm on the same side of the knee that's on the floor is going to reach tall as you can get it. Try and touch the roof, a little side bend at the top will open up the side of that hip as well. Again, keep that breathing going. And then of course, remember to do the other side as well. Okay, adductors are the inside of these hips. So really simply, you guys get to chill out and sit on the floor for this. We're gonna go down into a butterfly stretch. So for this, we've got the soles of the shoe together. The main goal for this is to try and keep the back completely upright. So we don't wanna see any hunching or flexing forward on the back. We'll try and drop these knees as low as possible so the hips are open and very gently with that straight back we're going to try and tip forwards just until we feel a good stretch through the groin and then the inside of those hips. We want to add a little bit more, those elbows can gently press down on the inside of the knees and if we want to bring the back into the stretch, guess what, we can drop the head, try and pull those elbows down to the floor and the last few seconds crawl those hands out in front. So final position. Every time you breathe out, remember, that's your opportunity to just travel a little bit further on each breath. Wonderful stuff. Okay, guys, back on your feet. So that brings you, finally, to the end of uh, the slow precise workout. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I hope that you found some really good progression from step one, two, and to step three. And the hope is, this has got you fit for the slope, and it's gonna help you get more winter.